Welcome everybody to our webinar today on the right to disconnect and the need uh, for a European uh, weekly common day of rest. Um, my name is Hendrik Merkamp. I'm senior policy advisor at CESI, the European Confederation of Independent Trade Unions. Um, as a European trade union umbre umbrella organization uh, representing more than 5 million workers in Europe, um, especially but not um, only in the public services, uh, we have been a long-standing member in the European Sunday Alliance. Um, and as such, I am glad to be your moderator during uh, the event today. Um, I am glad to see you all so numerous today to our webinar. Um, and I would like to welcome you on behalf of the entire steering group of the European Sunday Alliance, uh, which also includes uh, Uni Europa, um, the Commission of the Bishops Conferences of the European Union, COMESE, the Protestant Church in Germany, EKD, the Jesuit European Social Center, JESC, the Federation of Catholic Family Associations in Europe, FAFTE, Don Bosco International, DBI, the International Young Christian Workers, YOKI, and also the Confederation of European Churches, CEC. Um, as the European Sunday Alliance, um, overall, we are a broad network of more than 100 national Sunday alliances, trade unions, employers organizations, um, civil society organizations, churches, and religious communities. Uh, what unites us is that we are all committed to raise awareness of the unique value of synchronized free time for our European societies. Um, in this context, um, this webinar aims to raise awareness on the need to establish a weekly common day of rest for all, um, which in our view is both necessary and desirable due to different social, faith-related, um, economic and also environmental reasons. Um, this webinar takes place in particular against the backdrop of the ongoing deliberations and discussions within and among the EU institutions um, on a possible EU directive on a right to disconnect, um, a matter which the European Parliament has in principle uh, spoken up for in a recent legislative um, initiative report um, and which is now on the table of the European Commission for a decision on whether it will table an EU directive on it or not, potentially also with a provision um, on a day of synchronized free time. Um, before delving deeper into the topic um, and the subject matter, I would, however, first like to give the floor for a welcome address, address to um, Dennis Radke, um, who needs to leave us straight afterwards. Um, Dennis Radke is a German member of the European Parliament. Many of you will know him. Um, he's coordinator of the group of the European People's Party in the Committee on Employment and Social Affairs. And very importantly, he's also a very dear sponsor of our European Sunday Alliance. Um, Mr. Radke, I would give you the floor to, for the welcome address. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Merkam, dear colleagues and friends, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for the uh, for the invitation. You are right. I'm I'm actually in the in the middle of the meeting of the German uh, delegation, but it was uh, very important uh, for me to. To give a uh, to give a short address here, uh, because I'm an active supporter of the uh, Sunday Alliance in uh, in Germany, and uh, the political debate on the uh, on the right to disconnect um, in my eyes is very important. Um, the change of the labor market and uh, of the labor reality um, took place in the in the last years and. Uh, to be uh, to be uh, honest, uh, the COVID pandemic, uh, of course, was was quite a boost in this situation. Uh, 70, uh, 37 percent of the employed people in the European Union started with uh, mobile working, with working uh, from home. Uh, of course, this uh, this helped. Um, uh, in saving jobs, um, that was very important. And in my eyes, to be honest, it is not up to politics to decide this change of uh, uh, work is, is good or not. Uh, th this is not up to politics. This change has taken place and is taking place, uh, but it is up to politics to make clear 
um, that there has to be uh, clear rules um, also in a uh, in a in a changing uh, uh, working reality and uh, in my eyes this problem starts with uh, defining what is home office real home office and uh, and the difference to mobile working and um, especially for mobile working uh, we have all over europe uh, not many very clear rules uh, so there is a, a lack of privacy and uh, that is uh, one of the the, the the major points where i uh, we say uh, the work of the sunday alliance is is very important uh, because uh, work um, growth of the economy uh, that are all uh, important issues uh, but still we are talking about human beings and for every human beings uh, for me it is very clear uh, there has to be privacy there has to be uh, uh, the uh, opportunity to have some some recreation and so it is very important uh, that you are raising this issue over and over again and uh, uh, for for concluding uh, in my eyes as a parliament we we came up with a with a good solution uh, because uh, we, we had an intense debate in uh, establishing a framework uh, for, for a right to disconnect. And the solution we came up uh, with um, was uh, uh, we, 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 we went to the social partners uh, and said, it's up to you now. We give you three years time to come up with some concrete points. Uh, how to solve this problem, how to establish a framework, how to ensure that there will be privacy uh, and a kind of right to disconnect uh, for for uh, uh, employees in, in, in all, all over Europe. And that is what we have done. And in three years, we will get the results. And it is up to us then uh, to make this uh, into, uh, to transfer this into uh, a concrete law. Because Th that is, uh, as someone who has worked for a trade union in Germany for many, many years, that is one of my deepest beliefs. Uh, the social partners are much more closer to the reality uh, in business, in the companies, than politics can, can ever be. So in my eyes, this is a, a, a very good achievement, uh, a, a very good point we have uh, made as a parliament. So thank you. Uh, very much for the info, uh, uh, invitation. I wish you uh, a fruitful uh, discussion and uh, see you soon. And uh, I'm looking forward uh, to carry on with the debate uh, with you. And uh, so take care and uh, see you soon. Bye bye. Thank you very much, Mr. Ratke. Thank you. Um, now, Mr. Radke mentioned it already. Um, the context of this webinar is the ongoing discussions within and among the EU institutions on a possible new EU directive on a right to disconnect. Um, in January, the European Parliament adopted a so-called legislative initiative report, which Mr. Radke just hinted at, um, which in principle calls on the European Commission to table a proposal for an EU directive on the matter. Um, and importantly, the report also makes reference to the Council of Europe's European Social Charter, uh, which all EU member states have also ratified um, and which actually fixes in its Article 2.5. Um, and I quote, um, a weekly a weekly rest period which shall, as far as possible, coincide with the day of recognized um, by tradition or custom in the country or region concerned. Um, and um, still not least, um, against the background of this reference, um, today's webinar um, aims to explore into yeah, the political and the legal issues circling around a possible EU directive on the matter with a clause um, on synchronized free time. Um, and the webinar also seeks to consider um, some of the uh, social, faith-related, economic and environment, environmental benefits um, that a day of synchronized free time could very likely and plausibly bring. Um, to this end, we are very glad to have um, with us today a very high-level panel uh, to share their expertise and their opinions. Um, first of all, we will hear um, on the value of synchronized free time from uh, Patrizia Toya, um, an Italian MEP from the center-left SND group, um, who's also chair of the European Parliament intergroup on the social economy. 
Um, we will also hear more about the European Parliament's recent report on the right to disconnect um, from um, Alex Agio Saliba, who is uh, the MEP in the European Parliament who steered the report um, through to adoption as main rapporteur. Um, we will also hear about the value of synchronized free time from Miriam Lexman, a Slovakian MEP uh, from the center right EPP group, um, and also a member of the European Parliament Intergroup on Demographic Challenges and uh, Work-Life Balance and Youth Transition. Finally, we are very glad to have with us today um, Max Übe. Max Übe is head of unit in the B1 unit in the European Commission's Directorate General for Employment, Social Affairs and Inclusion. Um, and in this capacity, he's overseeing the European Commission's technical work on everything related uh, to the right to disconnect. Um, and um, yes, we are looking very much forward to get an update from him about the state of play concerning the work of the European Commission on the right to disconnect following the adoption of the uh, report by the European Parliament. Um, I would kindly insist all speakers to be very, very brief um, so that we also have uh, some time for a Q&A session after the interventions towards the end of the webinar. Um, due to the high number of registrations and the need to keep the Q&A also as focused as possible, uh, we have opted for a mode which is um, as practical as possible and at the same time as interactive as possible. Um, so what we did, we decided to filter some of the most pertinent questions that we received um, as part of the registration process from you. Um, and in the part, um, in the course of the Q&A, we will seek to unmute you and give you the floor to place uh, the questions that you submitted. Um, I also would like to notify you that the meeting is being recorded. Um, and so much for all the technical information. And without further ado, I would like to give the floor to Patricia Toya um, for her um, address. Thank you very much. Okay, can you can you hear me? Okay, okay. Uh, thank you so much uh, for inviting me uh, to this uh, important webinar on the right to be to connect to disconnect and the need for the European weekly common day of rest. Firstly, I want to thank uh, very warmly the European Sunday Alliance for uh, their effort to raise awareness of this fundamental topic and for their important initiative of this sense and for the other initiative in the past. We know that the COVID-19 crisis has changed the way we use to work. Even if working from home has been instrumental in helping safeguard employment and jobs during the crisis, the combination of long working hours and higher demands also leads to, uh, as a research shows, more cases of anxiety, depression, burnout, and other mental and physical health issues. Since the outbreak of the pandemic, working from home has increased by almost uh, 30%. And the people who work regularly from home are more than twice uh, as likely be, to surpass the maximum of 38 working uh, hours per week compared to those working from the office. The increase in telework and in the use of digital devices has resulted in an always on culture, which has a negative impact on the work life balance of employees and in general for people. Uh, the European Parliament, uh, Parliament um, considers the right to disconnect a fundamental right that allows workers to refrain from engaging in work-related tasks, such as call for, call for calls, emails, and other digital communication outside working hours without facing negative consequences. In January, in fact, we approved in the Parliament a legislative initiative with a big majority. This is a good uh, sign. And uh, uh, here we have the rapporteur, my dear colleagues, Saliba, of this report. Mm. I think uh, it's important. We asked to call on the Commission to prepare a direct and um, with uh, some uh, maximum uh, minimum requirement and uh, other conditions. 
In addition, uh, we know uh, that uh, IEPRS uh, note uh, on the future of work highlights that this hyperconnectivity and due to teleworking can lead to a particular type of stress referred to a techno stress. Anytime and anywhere connectivity can be intrusive, potentially softening the boundaries between work and personal and I had family life and can also raise privacy concerns and lead to work life balance conflicts. Now that millions of Europeans are working from home, European legislation is more urgent than ever to establish the right to be disconnected. We need to be cautious, cautious that the telework doesn't not become a new kind, a new form of slavery. The work of the European Sunday Alliance on the right to be connected is uh, key. And the European Sand Alliance has already engaged with different initiatives to support a work-free Sunday. And personally, I have supported in the past this initiative. And um, Alliance has worked to raise awareness of the unique value of a synchronized free time for our European society. As you have said public, publicly, and I agree with you that much time has been lost during which in the past citizens and families used to do volunteer work or civic engagement or joint social, sport and faith related activities, domestic and care responsibilities and then and more generally to spend time together. Synchronized free time is key for citizens and families to take part in activity and hobbies all together and for workers to recover from work and alleviate stress through activities with friends, families and communities, local communities and social communities. As European Parliament, we need to promote member state initiative in this sense, and I will promote something also in my country for uh, the well-being and uh, health of all. Now is the moment, I think is now the moment to stand by their side and give citizens what they deserve, the right to, be, uh, to disconnect. It is time to update workers' rights so that they correspond to the new realities of digital age. Uh, as you know, we are engaged also for the digi right, digital right for um, digital workers and the other kind of uh, rights. And I put this right to, to disconnected in the framework of the different rights. In conclusion, I would like to thank again the European um, Alliance and I will uh, assure of uh, my full support. Uh, I am sure that uh, today we'll uh, attend a very interesting debate about this important question. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Stoya, about these uh, very passionate words uh, in favor of synchronized free time also and the proper right to disconnect for workers in Europe. Um, I would like to give the floor to Mr. Alex Agio Salibar now um, for, um, yes, also his view um, in relation now to the Parliament report, which he was steering and his expectations of what should be coming out of it now. Um, you have the floor, please. First of all, thanks Hendrik and the Sunday Alliance. I would also like to say hi to my colleague Patricia Toya, who basically also has already uh, outlined uh, the scope of the right to disconnect and the initiative that the European Parliament has uh, undertook and is still undertaking um, with pushing forward politically the right to disconnect. So let us start, I think, from the most important question. Why do we need the right to disconnect? Because this was one of the biggest questions uh, which, were, which was doing a lot of rounds uh, from the main critics of this right, uh, even during the negotiations and before the vote in the plenary uh, on the right to disconnect. First of all, at European level, although we have the working time directive and basic fundamental rights, which are giving weekly and daily fundamental rights of rest period to our workers, we still don't have uh, the right to disconnect defined under EU legislation. We have 
um, the right to disconnect, which is, I would say, haphazardly um, applied and implemented by different legislations in different member states. France was a, a front runner when it comes to the right to disconnect. In Italy, we have a legislation catering for a small chunk of workers for smart workers, which was, again, a very important development for, for the right to disconnect. And then we have a very recent legislation in Ireland, which is very much in line with what the European Parliament is proposing. Because we are proposing as a European Parliament to have the right to disconnect as a fundamental right to be enjoyed by each and every worker throughout the Union, which has connection and, when, and which has um, which is using basically digital means. In France, it is this right is awarded only to those companies which employ more than 50 employees. And as I said, in Italy, only a small fraction of the workforce is defined as smart workers. So what we are proposing is a fundamental right to disconnect to each and every worker. Why are we proposing and why have we moved forward this recommendation coupled with an annex with a fully fledged piece of legislation, fully fledged directive? Because ultimately today we are living in a world where the boundaries between working time and rest time are being totally blurred. They are being blurred because our uh, workforce uh, and working time has been revolutionized by digital means. Digital means which are so fundamentally important, uh, especially they were fundamentally important during the pandemic to, to save countless number of jobs, to continue to communicate, to continue to live as normally as possible. These are all positive side effects of, of, of digitalization of our workforce. But at the, at the same time, there are also negative repercussions. And if we speak about uh, occupational health and safety, if we speak about the rising numbers of mental health issues, depression, um, techno stress, uh, muscular and eye illnesses, these were and are becoming more prominent for teleworkers, for smart workers, for workers which are more mobile and are not working directly from their offices. Therefore, this effect of always being connected, of this digital obesity is, is more pronounced today during the pandemic, although it has been there for, for, for a number of years. Therefore, uh, also the European Parliament has been lobbying on the right to disconnect much before the start of the pandemic. But today, the political visibility of this digital obesity is more clear. And this was also clearly highlighted by a study undertaken by Eurofound. They made two surveys during the pandemic, and both of them are confirming. If you look at statistics, only 5% of office workers are complaining that they are working more than the allocated maximum working hours per week and daily working hours. On the other hand, it is around 40% of teleworkers, smart workers, flexi workers who are saying that they work more than eight hours every day. They work more than the 48 maximum working hours every week. So the problem is more visible for um, workers which are more mobile. But the problem is there for each and every workers. And that's why we haven't restricted the right to disconnect as a European Parliament only to teleworkers. The right to disconnect can protect a number of fundamental rights for our workers, fundamental rights which our forefathers have so hardly fought during the past, past during uh, past years to safeguard for our workers. Workers' fundamental rights, protection of fair working conditions, protection of fair remuneration, protection of working time and work-life balance. We cannot speak about work-life balance when our Phones, mobile phones, smartphones are ringing on Sundays, on Saturdays, outside working time, when we go home to enjoy our family, to enjoy our loved ones. And we have to stay connected with, with, with our digital devices. This is not rest time. So it's, it's, it's really important also to protect this fundamental uh, principle, this fundamental principle of rest time and protection also of work-life balance, because you cannot have uh, the right balance when you are constantly connected. Uh, 
and also protection of health and safety um, of our workers and also protection of equality between between men and women so these are the fundamental pillars of protection the reason that why we need we need the right the right to disconnect with regards to rest periods spent uh, with family this basically allows us to rest and recover from work better helping us also to stay fit and therefore if we are if we have a fitter uh, a workforce which is healthier both physically and also mentally we will definitely have a workforce which is also more productive uh, and 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 this is also an argumentation which i cannot understand by those who are criticizing the right to disconnect because we had some quarters and some critics which were saying we cannot have the right to disconnect established at european level because if we have the right to disconnect at european level we will be uh, basically hitting uh, negatively the competitivity of our workforce we cannot pretend that our workforce is uh, productive outside their working time so the argumentation of productivity outside working time does not mm, make sense in the ambit and the discussion of the right to disconnect in my opinion and in the opinion of of the majority the big majority of the european parliament which voted in favor of the right to disconnect we believe that productivity should be restricted to working time when workers are being remunerated for that when workers are basically contractually contractually working therefore um, this is this is um, also an important part of our of our debate when it comes to joint synchronized free time and also rest periods for me this is also of fundamental importance it is fundamental importance for family values uh, in the european union where workers can basically spend time with their families with their loved ones uh, and this is uh, also directly i would say correlated to the to the right to disconnect um, to because it will also help safeguard fundamental rest periods weekly and daily rest periods where workers can enjoy their life outside outside working time when it comes to the technical aspects of what the european parliament is is proposing in the fully fleshed piece of legislation that we have approved by a big majority in the european parliament we have approved a possible scope for the right to disconnect content uh, for the future right to disconnect minimum requirements that should be respected when it comes also to the role of social partners then Sratke has also mentioned the importance of fully involving our our social partners our trade unions uh, employer representatives we are totally totally in line with that point and this is basically also um, the strongest point of the right to disconnect because when you're speaking about the right to disconnect you cannot have an inflexible right to disconnect a right to disconnect which does not cater for specific sectors for specific um, also um, uh, workers dialogue in each and every member state which which vary a lot um, and therefore yes social partners should and must be fully uh, involved to negotiate the right to disconnect at uh, employer and at employer also undertaking we are also giving protection for workers to be able to safeguard their right to disconnect to be able to vouch for their right to disconnect without facing negative repercussions and discrimination and that's why we are also introducing a number of mechanisms against discrimination and also the important principle of the reversal of burden of proof when there is uh, a would claim you, for the right. Would you come to a close eventually, yes, yes. Alex? Okay. Yes. So this, this is the reason that are behind the Parliament's report from a technical point of view. Um, now we have approved the right to disconnect. Now, now the ball is in the Commission's court. We don't want to wait for another three years. And this is not reflective of what we have agreed in the European Parliament. We have uh, in the European Parliament agreed that social partners at EU level should be um, involved from the very start of the discussions, but we have never tied the Commission's hands to wait for three years 
before starting discussions with our social partners. And we are um, pushing forward Commissioner Schmidt and European Commission to act as soon as possible so that the right to disconnect could be enjoyed by our workforce as soon as possible, especially during the time of the pandemic. Thank you very much, Alex, for this uh, passionate closing also, uh, which we agree with, and for making also the productivity argument, which we are also stressing. We are, the Sunday Alliance, we are stressing um, the fact that uh, spending resting time together is more productive than spending resting time alone. Uh, this is very important to us. Um, so thank you very much. Um, I would um, also for time reasons straight give the floor to Miriam Lexman um, and also kindly ask her to stay within the 10 minutes or even make it shorter uh, so that we have some time for the questions and answers um, afterwards. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the floor and thank you very much to the, all the organizers because I think this is a very timely event and a very important event. I'm working with the European Sunday Alliance very closely since I started my mandate and my mandate actually started with the corona a year ago because I arrived only after Brexit into the European Parliament. So practically my all uh, engagement with the European Parliament and as a member of the EMPO committee uh, was uh, influenced by by the by the corona crisis and that's why i will probably uh, start to analyze the impact of the crisis we are still unfortunately facing the the, the hopefully the last phase of um, at the moment on the employees rights because we have seen two dimensions on one hand we have seen that many jobs can be done uh, from home and and that has allowed uh, workers and, and, and employees to, uh, to better balance their, their life, uh, spend more time with family because they did not need to travel and have more value time together as a family. On the other hand, we have also observed the negative impact, which practically uh, made many more people who were not so much working online before because we know that this trend started especially in the tech companies or or maybe the international organizations this trend started much earlier the people who are working online and the impact was that practically people started to work 24 7 their phones were always ringing their emails were always beeping and in the middle of night they felt obliged to answer emails so i think that this is a negative trend which we have to observe. Also, I mean, have, have, we have seen that the work at home, especially for women, meant that they have to uh, manage not only their job, but they also have to help children with schooling and they also have to cook for their children because they didn't uh, attend the school. Schools and the canteens were obviously not providing the food for the, at least the whole meal for lunch for their children. So, and, and on top of this, we know that many families are taking care of elderly, many employers have the also extra uh, duty, which is a moral duty, and it's a, it's a duty which is, belongs to the family, but, uh, but we know that the, the, the care of elderly, the care of our grandparents, practically during the co co COVID crisis made the work-life balance even harder. And this blurred line between uh, work and, um, and life uh, uh, practically and family life practically has a, a very negative impact on our, uh, on our mental health. We know that depressions are growing. We know that many people suffer burnout. And we, we know that uh, and there is not even enough of studies. And I, unfortunately, I think that... Um, after the, the COVID crisis, when the studies will be conducted, we will see a huge increase in mental health, uh, in mental health problems, and especially, especially uh, among parents who had to manage too many duties during the COVID crisis. Uh, and, uh, I, and I already, already see it uh, from, um, from the statistics of NGOs who are providing support to people who suffer from mental health because they know that the clientele has grown during the pandemics. But of course, we don't have the, the correct numbers because they will, they will have to be lo looked into after the crisis is over. So 
what, what we know is that 30% uh, of people who are working online are suffering uh, uh, from problems to balance their, their, their work and their, their family life. And only 5% of workers, I mean, these are the statistics done before the COVID crisis, only 5% of workers who are not only working in the office. And we know, and it was already mentioned by many, many previous speakers, that practically the quality life uh, with family uh, re relax and, and, um, and kind of recreation is helping us not only be more relaxed persons and, and, and combine and, and, and manage all these duties better, but also this has an impact on our working uh, uh, conditions and the, the way how we can uh, proceed and, and perform at work because we know that uh, relaxed persons are more efficient and more effective at work. Uh, I come from Slovakia and uh, there was a famous, uh, uh, famous entrepreneur, uh, Batya, uh, who produced shoes. Uh, he was, uh, I mean, he was, he was kind of operating within the dead time Czechoslovakia. And, uh, and uh, one of his uh, uh, rules were that the workers had to have a, uh, uh, practically enough of space for the family life and enough, enough of space for relaxation because he knew that then their performance may, will be will be much uh, higher. So I think that uh, from all this context, we know that uh, we need to have a special a new look at workers' rights uh, because of this change uh, uh, of practically becoming on online workers, which was a dramatic change, especially now during the pandemics. And I think for many jobs, it will continue. Uh, I very much support the, the right to disconnect because I believe that this is the only way how we can reach that the work-life balance is properly observed and we can practically guarantee that the workers are not exhausted and not suffering mental problems. Uh, what I believe that though we have to make make sure that the the way how this is going to be captured uh, in a in a legislation needs to be primarily uh, a, a agreement between the social partners because i think and 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 dennis radke my colleague uh, said it very very clearly that those who are practically in the situation those whose lives will be influenced by this law those are those who know best how to set this so i would uh, I would uh, support this idea that this is mainly uh, suggested by the social partners. And that's why I, I mean, that was my kind of um, uh, observation when the, the European Parliament's uh, uh, report on this was, uh, was adopted, that I did not consider a right step that the report already concer uh, consi uh, consisted of a draft directive, because I believe that, that the way how this is going to be managed needs to be first discussed and, and proper, properly suggested by the social partners based on, on their agreement. Um, and coming from the, coming from the um, uh, right to, to disconnect, I will move on to the other topic, which is the right to disconnect, uh, not, not uh, on a daily basis, but the one day in a week. And I very much support the initiative that we'll come back to the idea that Sunday is a day of rest, Sunday is a family day, Sunday is a day which will all uh, help uh, us all to gain new strengths and powers to, to proceed with our daily jobs from Monday onwards. Um, I think that obviously this is a national legislation. We know that some member states already have it in the in the legislation. And they have Sunday as a day of rest. Uh, and as a, as I said, I'm coming from Slovakia, an ex-communist country. I would probably give you kind of historical arguments as well. That uh, uh, first of all, the, the the Sunday as a day of rest we observe from 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 uh, from the year 321 when the Emperor Constantine has, uh, by law, set this day as a, as a day of rest. Of course, this was based on the, on the Old Testament, on the Jewish tradition that, that there is one day, the seventh day is a day of rest. During the French Revolution, though, be, uh, because this revolution became very uh, atheistic in a way, 
there was an attempt to uh, to change the week into the 10 days week so there will be no this christian judo christian tradition observed any longer in in france and we know that this has created lots of problems and practically not only people but also animals were suffering to conduct their jobs we have observed similar attempts during the Soviet Union and in other communist countries to change the calendar that there is no seven days written. But we know, and it, the history has shown us practically, somehow the seven days written and the desire to have one day of rest um, out of the seven is somehow in the people's genes. And I would maybe say here that, of course, the, the market can, can provide different workers different days for, for rest. But I would uh, suggest that we still come back to the sun and the idea of a Sunday being a day of rest for most of the people, because we know that some I mean, hospitals cannot be closed and some services cannot be closed. But at least that we will provide most of the people one day of rest, which families can observe together. Because obviously, if one, if one parent has a has Tuesday free and one parent has Sunday free, the family cannot be together as a family. And I believe that, that this is also a very important element that we will provide the families a day when they can spend time together. They can, this is also a health, uh, provides a healthy development for the children that they have time with both of the parents uh, together. And we know that uh, this can have impact on their future life. So I, I, I only su support all the uh, initiatives. I mean, also, I mean, the, the Bishop's Conference ha has come up with that we will uh, come back to this idea of uh, Sunday as a day of rest in the European Union. I mean, I know that during the COVID crisis, uh, practically, the shops were closed uh, so most of the time. Yes, I'm closing. Time. Yes, I'm closing now. And um, and I believe that we have uh, realized as uh, as uh, as customers that we don't need to go to the shop on a daily basis. I understand that this has a social impact on people. I think we lost your connection. Is that possible? I cannot hear you. Can others hear Mrs. Lexman? Okay. I think for time reasons, we need to move on, but I think she had finished in any case almost uh, with her intervention. Um, if she comes back, we will thank her again. Um, and I would move forward to, um, to Max Uber now, um, just for a very quick, very, very quick state of play of what is going on within the European Commission at the moment with regards to a right to disconnect, where are discussions and what, what is planned at the moment. Thank you, Max. Okay, thank you. And uh, thank you for, for the invite and an interesting discussion uh, so far. There's a lot of learning as, as always, including about just now the role of Emperor Constantine. Um, indeed, I will not, um, after so many distinguished speaker, try to uh, repeat what, uh, what has been said, but rather give you an update uh, from the Commission Services uh, point of view on uh, a really important uh, topic relevant for so many uh, European uh, citizens. Um, let me maybe first start to underline again that in the EU we luckily benefit from a strong uh, labor acquis that sets rules already related to working and resting times, health and safety, uh, sound working conditions, etc. Alex Saliba has referred to that. We have the, uh, the OSHA acquis, the working time directive, now the transparent and predictable working the conditions directive, the work-life balance directive of 2019. Uh, and only a few weeks ago, now the, the Porto Social Summit endorsed uh, the European uh, pillar action plan. And in this action plan, uh, we also touch upon the right to disconnect and the need to further analyze uh, the challenges posed by the uh, evolutions in the world of work that have uh, been described um, by previous uh, speakers. Um, this reference in the in the action plan was, of course, prompted by the European Parliament's uh, own initiative report on on the right uh, to to disconnect that uh, Alex Saliba presented here uh, today. The Commission welcomed this resolution, uh, which uh, really raises a pertinent issue, uh, and as I said, is of concern for many many Europeans, in particular now in the times of the uh, pandemic. 
Some of you might know that the Commission has in the meantime formally uh, responded uh, to this uh, resolution in line with the uh, established procedures. So that means that uh, Commission uh, Vice President Shevchevic has sent a letter uh, end of March, I think on the 25th of March it was, uh, to uh, President Sassoli to the European uh, Parliament and outlined the, uh, the, the response. And this letter, first of all, uh, recalls the important uh, political commitment uh, that our uh, president, so President van der Leyen, made in her political uh, guidelines as regards uh, resolutions adopted by the European Parliament under Article 225. Um, so the Commission is committed to, to follow up with a legislative act in full respect of proportionality, subsidiarity, and better law making uh, principles. And um, as a first step, and also in line with the Parliament's resolution, the Commission uh, invites social partners to find uh, commonly agreed solutions to address uh, the, the challenges raised by telework, by digitalization, and the, the right to, uh, to disconnect. And the Commission will proactively support social partners in their uh, endeavor. In parallel, the Commission will uh, continue to explore the, the context and the implications of the right to disconnect and remote work uh, to inform its reflection on a potential EU legislative initiative on the right to disconnect within the broader context uh, of uh, re remote work. To the best of our knowledge, uh, the need for a European synchronized free time has not been considered by many studies and analysis uh, so far. However, as a follow-up to the European Parliament resolution uh, on the right to disconnect, we, we plan on looking in depth um, into the challenges and opportunities uh, related to the impact of the new technologies uh, that they have on um, workers' health and, and safety and the work-life balance, including uh, the need for quality uh, free time. And this will uh, entail fostering uh, discussions and the identification uh, of, of best practices in various fora, of course, with the involvement of, of social partners, but, uh, but also member states, the EU institutions, of course, and, and other stakeholders. Uh, we will also conduct research to explore the context evolution and implications of, of telework and the right to disconnect beyond uh, the pandemic that hopefully will uh, come to an end uh, soon. And then based on the social partners uh, discussions and uh, the evidence we have uh, collected, the Commission may proceed uh, with a so-called first stage social partner consultation uh, under Article 153 uh, of the treaty in view of a possible Commission proposal addressing uh, the issues requested um, in the resolution. That's uh, where we uh, stand at the moment. Uh, let me maybe, uh, as a last point, add that not only the European Parliament and, uh, and the Commission uh, are active uh, on this uh, topic, but also um, the, the Council, uh, the Portuguese presidency has um, proposed and negotiated Council conclusions uh, with the member states on, on telework uh, and the broader context, and they should be adopted, I think, on the 14th of June, so in about two weeks' time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Max, for this um, this uh, short summary and the update. And it's uh, good to hear that you are going in the in both ways. You are encouraging the social dialogue, and also you are preparing analysis uh, within the European Commission services. That's very encouraging to hear also. Um, yes, this concludes our um, panel um, and um, we have some minutes left for a question and answer session. Um, and uh, without much further ado, I would like um, to give first the floor to Benedict Collin, who um, has a question on the social desirability of synchronized free time. Um, Benedict, if we could have your question, please. Thank you very much, Enric. Thank you to all the speakers and um, all very interesting points that have been raised. So it will be a question from the um, FAFSE, the Federation of Catholic Family Associations in Europe. And uh, we are very much invested uh, on the questions of uh, 
weekly resting days for families to, uh, to allow families to spend time together. Uh, I will be very quick as most points were um, raised on the question of um, the increase of working times in, with the current organization of the labor markets. And as Mrs. Uh, Toya and next man, next man raised, the question of the constant availability of workers through digitalization and especially in the COVID-19 context. Um, and as we, it has been told, it results in the loss in a loss of free time and in a loss of time for families to spend time together. So my question, my question, I guess, to all the speakers would be, would an EU directive on the right to disconnect uh, include a weekly um, work-free day? And especially I would like to stress the idea of a synchronized day in order to allow families and people not only to have free time alone, but as well to spend time together uh, to engage in social faith related activities, sport, volunteer work, and to invest in, in, in social solidarity. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Benedict. Um, I think we don't have time to give everybody the floor, um, but um, is there um, one speaker who would like to answer to this? Um, maybe Mrs. Toya, do you have an answer to this question? We don't hear you. Okay. Um, perhaps uh, Mr. Agio Saliba, would you like to respond to this question? You need to unmute yourself. Okay. Okay, you can hear me now. A very so, brief answer. Yes. Um, uh, I think that we have to keep these two discussions, which are distinct. They are basically dealing with the same issue, and we're dealing with rest time um, and, and basically the right to disconnect and the initiative of the European Parliament goes in that direction to establish rest periods and respect, not just established because the rest periods are established by the working time directive, but the right to disconnect is enforcing the working time directive and the new digital realities that we are living, therefore safeguarding rest periods. On the other hand, uh, synchronized free time did not feature uh, in, in, in the right to disconnect, not because we don't agree with synchronized free time and with particular days whereby families, um, workers can spend their time with their loved ones. Uh, I think this is, this is really an important point. But uh, I don't think that a legal instrument um, can enshrine both principles under the same head. They are um, relevant to each other, uh, one topic cannot be discussed also without discussing the other, but at the same time, I think these are two separate um, discussions, which again, are all fighting for the same thing, to safeguard quality rest time, and yes, um, safeguard um, uh, free time for our families, for our workers. Thank you very much, um, Alex. Um... We have one other question from um, Alex uh, from Kumisi um, on some of the economic um, and productivity related aspects um, of synchronized free time. Alex, if we could have your question. Thank you very much, Hendrik, and thanks again to all the speakers. Uh, yes, I'm Alex de Boissege. I'm policy advisor at Comisi, the Commission of the Bishops' Conferences of the EU, and we are also an active member of the European Sunday Alliance. Now, today, many of the speakers have mentioned that time for family, friends and community is important. Um, as part of the Alliance, we observe that many workers have lower stress levels, are generally happier and are able to recover better during common free time shared with their family, friends and communities. And this has also implication for their performance at work. Therefore, my question is, would it not be time that EU agencies such as the European Agency for Safety and Health at Work and your fund uh, start to research and gather sound scientific data on the links between loneliness versus the common free time off and the implications for the health and safety of workers and their performance? And this could serve as a reference to the policymakers. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alex, um, for this uh, 
question. Is there one of the MEPs who would like to answer? Do we still have, um, I don't see everybody on my screen. Do we have uh, Miriam Lexman still with us or not? If, if so, would, would she maybe like to answer this question? Okay. Um, I believe we don't have, maybe we lost her on the way. Um, Max Übe, maybe you would like to answer to this um, because you um, you already hinted a bit at the um, scope of analysis um, that you are also envisaging at the moment um, in order to underpin your work um, on the right to disconnect. Um, do you have any take from the European Commission on this, on the role of EU OSHA and Eurofound to compile data on this? I'm unmuted, yeah. Um, yes, indeed. I mean, as I, uh, I mentioned earlier already, um, we are now looking into the launch of a, a bigger uh, study that uh, would support then further uh, work on, on, on this topic. And uh, indeed, um, uh, the, the issue of synchronized time um, would uh, probably feature in there. But you have said rightly that uh, the, the agencies um, under uh, DG Employment's remit like uh, Eurosha in Bilbao and Eurofound in, in Dublin, uh, and particularly Eurofound has done and will do and is about to do uh, a lot of work uh, on the, the topic of uh, the right to disconnect and, and telework, I think within the next uh, 12 months, uh, really a series of publications uh, will be made. Um, I'm now not familiar uh, in how far they will also cover uh, the topic that is uh, so, so dear to your hearts, um, but uh, in our context, uh, we will try to make sure that uh, these will be properly reflected. I saw Ms. Lexman is back. I don't know if she wants to come in on this one. Mrs. Lexman, would you like to take the floor on this question or should we move to the next one? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, because the problem is that my mic is blocked by you and I couldn't speak in even before because because I, I cannot unblock my, the microphone. So you have to unblock the microphone for me if okay. you want me to speak. So yes, I, I just would uh, I would only stress what I already said during the during my uh, intervention is that I believe that uh, what is the most important is uh, uh, in the to, to the right to disconnect is that it's uh, really, uh, tailored to the concrete situation. So that's why I believe that the, the best approach is through uh, the social partners to finding the best uh, solution because uh, that we have different ways of, of the need and different ways of per people working online. And I think it has to be tailored to the different situations. And, and for that reason, I believe that it's a very, I mean, the best approach is that the social partners will find uh, proposals for the concrete situations. And this will be then, uh, I mean, in training into the legislation or, or on the European level, all national levels, because I, I still believe that part of this uh, falls to the subsidiarity principle. And uh, I believe that it's, I mean, the solution should be as close as, uh, pr produce as close as to the people. So I believe that the national solutions are, are maybe more appropriate here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Lexman, for, for this um, answer. Um, I would like to say that we have two other questions which we would very much like to table. Um, so if you could all be with us for another five or seven minutes, that would be great. Um, we have uh, one question um, from Luciano La Rivera um, on, the on the political support of uh, a day of uh, synchronized free time. Uh, Luciano, if we could have your question, please. Thank you very much. I'm uh, an Italian Jesuit. I'm here in Bruxelles by a few days. And uh, thank you for what have you said. Uh, the European Social Charter fixes in Article 2.5, I quote, to ensure a weekly rest period which shall, as far as possible, coincide with the day recognized by tradition or custom in the country of region concerned as a day of rest. 
the charter is a treaty which all EU member states have signed and ratified. Should it not be a very controversial matter to have a very broad political backing to translate this matter also in a directive of the EU? Thank you very much for this uh, question, Luciano. I think um, maybe um, Alex Agiusa Liba, if you would like uh, to take the floor, I think this is this is uh, this fits for you. This question. Yes, as 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 I said, I totally agree with having um, a day, uh, which is a rest day, in accordance to the as 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 as, as the previous speaker has said, in accordance with the tradition of each uh, and and every member state. I think this makes sense if we really want to treat our workers, treat our families, not simply as robots, not simply as um, productive machines, but as human beings. And I don't see um, any negative um, repercussions, both economically and socially, for having such a right enforced at EU level. As I said, and I firmly hold this point as, 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 as a pivotal point in my work, especially in the Ample Committee. Uh, when workers are uh, not treated as human beings with dignity, and when they are treating simply as machines uh, to increase, to try to increase, not to increase, to try to increase their productivity and use this productivity argumentation all the time, I think this would have negative repercussions on their physical and mental health, which would definitely lead directly to negative productivity, less productivity, and also negative economic repercussions. So in my opinion, having syn joint synchronized uh, free time and a day which is established uh, every week as a day of rest, I don't think that it can leave negative repercussions both on our economic and those also social life. Still, it is already very tricky to discuss the right to disconnect. It would be more complicated and I believe it would make a very big disservice to the whole discussion if we try to confuse in one single legislative instrument the right to disconnect and synchronized free time. Um, so both are important. Both, in my humble opinion, should be um, tackled by legislation at EU level, but legislatively, they should and must be treated separately. But yes, uh, I totally agree. And I think that it's high time to have a day of rest for families, for workers to enjoy with their loved ones, with their family. It's of utmost importance. Thank you very much uh, for this uh, for this uh, contribution, Alex. Um, we have one question from Damian Patting. I would like to give him the floor. Could we unmute him? I cannot hear you, Damian. Maybe we can, um, I will, um, maybe you can type the question um, in, in the chat or by email and we will take it afterwards and we will um, proceed with one other question for now. Okay, perfect. Because we have um, one further question um, from Renato Cursi from Don Bosco International on some of the legal aspects related to um, the introduction of a common day of a synchronized free time. Renato, if you could have your question, please. Yes, thank you very much, Hendrik. Can you hear me well? Yes. Wonderful. Many thanks to all the speakers today. And uh, just let me introduce the context of my question. So Sunday, as you may know, as a common day of rest was already enshrined in Article 5 of the EU Working Time Directive of 1993, the predecessor of the current Working Time Directive of 2003, with Article 118, of the EC Treaty, 
today Article 153 of the TFEU as a legal basis, which gives the EU the competence to adopt measures aimed at contributing to the protection of the health and safety of workers. This was annulled by the Court of Justice in 1996, not because the legal basis was unlawful, but merely because, I quote, the legislator had failed to explain why Sunday, as a weekly rest day, is more closely connected with the health and safety of workers than any other day of the week. So does this not mean that the European Union could, from a legal perspective, um, safely adopt a directive which prescribes a day of synchronized free time, but leaves it at the discretion of the member states to choose which date should be. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Renato. Maybe I would give this question, I would hand this question over to Max Uber. Um, do you see any legal issues or um, wouldn't the EU have a safe legal right uh, to or legal instrument, a legal base to come up with um, a day of synchronized free time um, also as it is phrased, for instance, in the European Social Charter at the moment? We need to unmute him, I think, Thomas. Okay. Yes, no, no. Um, I'm not sure I understood the question 100% correct. So the, the question is a uh, day, uh, a synchronized day, but uh, let's say not necessarily the Sunday. Um, exactly. So the question yeah. was that um, there was um, already the old working time directive in the 1990s, which included a day of synchronized rest, but it was mm. fixed as a Sunday. Yeah. Um, and in the end, the Court of Justice annulled this clause because um, the council couldn't justify why the day off had to be a Sunday and not, for instance, a Saturday. But it didn't really, um, it, it, but, but the court was very fine with the legal basis. Um, mm -hmm. I think it was a legal basis from the health and safety field, which mm -hmm. would justify a day of synchronized free time. Mm -hmm. And there the question was if then the EU wouldn't have a legal or a safe legal option to propose a day of synchronized free time um, if it is phrased in a more open way, like for instance, at the moment in the European Social Charter which makes reference to a day of custom or tradition. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, this would need to be uh, checked with uh, our legal services and the, the, the legal experts in, in, in DG employment. But from what you uh, read out here, I uh, would think that that should be possible. Where I would have more doubts, uh, also according to what you, you've read out, is uh, you know to, uh, to, to fix the day to, let's say, um, uh, let's do it on, on, on the Sunday, because here indeed uh, uh, traditions, customs come in. Uh, you could very well argue, and I'm sure many people would argue with subsidiarity. Why do you need to, to do that at European uh, level? Uh, but uh, um, the, the one day per week, uh, I mean, it's anyway foreseen uh, by, by the working time directive. So the question synchronized, yeah, we uh, would need to look a bit deeper in, into that. But uh, it would not, uh, to be clear, no, I, I think it would not necessarily help the, the Sunday Alliance because I don't think uh, the legal basis would allow for determining one specific day uh, of the week to be the synchronized um, free day. Okay, yes, thank you very much for these insights. Um, maybe before we close, I would give one other go uh, for Damian, if you would like to try again to take the floor. Can we unmute him? Thomas, I think he's, he, he's there under name Katrin Hatzinger. Hi, do you hear me? Okay, yes. I'm Damian Petting from the Protestant Church in Germany, and we are also a member of the Sunday Alliance. And I have one more short question to Max Übel, perhaps, because I heard that some suggest here in Brussels that the European uh, that uh, the European Commission should uh, implement the right to disconnect into the strategic framework on health and safety at work. 
And so I would like to know if it's already clear that it should become a directive or if there is a certain danger to implement it into a strategic plan uh, and that it's not a real legal act that would be enforceable as well. Thank you. Well, the, uh, the new uh, OSH uh, strategic framework that will be adopted, if I'm not mistaken, on the 23rd of, of June already, um, this is uh, not a legislative uh, act or proposal, definitely not. And uh, as far as I know, but uh, as you can imagine, it's still under, under discussion. Uh, there will be also a reference um, to uh, the, the issue of the right uh, to, to disconnect, but not let's say not go much further than uh, what you find already uh, now in the, uh, the social pillar action plan that also refers, uh, of course, to the, uh, again, important uh, European Parliament uh, report uh, on, on the topic. A legislative proposal uh, would uh, need, um, I mean, people that, that know our area know that requires a two-stage uh, social partner consultation uh, according to the, the treaty that uh, takes uh, quite uh, quite a long time that needs to be uh, properly uh, prepared. Uh, it requires an impact assessment and so on. So this is a, um, a much uh, longer time frame, and uh, definitely not for the uh, the OSH framework that will be uh, presented already in uh, I think in two weeks, uh, three weeks time, 21st of, of June. Yeah. Thank you very much. This was very clear answered, very much to the point. Thank you. Um, well, this, um, we are already 12 minutes over time, and this would bring our webinar to the close. Um, I think we've had um, a very good first uh, exchange, uh, which we were very glad about. Um, I think we've heard um, that there is a strong support for yeah, the social and also the economic argument in favor of synchronized free time. I think we all agree um, that there is a big added value. Um, and um, but that there's also still maybe the need to gather more scientific data on it. So here, if we come back to the role of the Commission and also then in particular EU OSHA, Eurofound and, and, and the think tank community to, to make this a topic, this I think would be very much appreciated uh, to turn these plausible considerations also into hard scientific facts. Um, I think where um, I heard some disagreement in the discussion is about the policy tool, if it should be pursued, if the day of synchronized free time should be pursued via social partner agreements or via an EU directive. I think here there were still some, they, 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 here there's still some discussions which need to be continued. Um, and also from what I deduct from the discussions, we still need to discuss um, if this right to disconnect and a possible directive, if this is the proper tool to address the day of synchronized free time or if there may be another EU directive, I don't know, the working time directive or other, other policy tool where this, this should be better addressed. So um, we will stay in contact with all of the speakers. Also, of course, with you, Max Übel, we will be glad to accompany this further during the next weeks and months. Um, and with this, I would like to thank you all for your um, attendance today and for your interest. We are very glad to have such a high number of participants. I think this also reflects the importance that many persons and communities attached to the matter. Um, and with this, I would like to close the webinar. Just to mention before we close, if you would like to get in contact or in touch with us for any queries or questions, you are very welcome to get in touch with any of the um, organizations that um, are member of the steering group of the European Sunday Alliance. These you find on the program of the event from today, or you can also always drop an email to contact at European Sunday Alliance point EU. Thank you very much and bye bye. <laughs>